Hello gin lovers and welcome back to No Nonsense Gin Reviews with me, Bobby Freeman. Now then, what is this handsome looking fellow on my left hand side? Well, I shall tell you my friends, this is none other than Adnam's Copperhouse Gin. And it was recommended to me by one of my subscribers whose name is Craig Bestwick. So thanks very much for the recommendation, Craig. Um, before we go on, let's just take a moment to just appreciate the beauty that is this bottle. Because I just think, I think that's an absolute masterpiece. You know, we've said before, the bottle's not gonna make it taste any different, not gonna make it taste any better, but you have to stand out in this saturated market. And I just think that does it absolutely perfectly. So top mark straight away to Adnams for the absolutely extraordinarily beautiful bottle. So many of you may know that Adnams actually make uh, traditionally beers and ciders, but they've branched out into the gins. And I've seen this one quite a lot on the shelves, as I said, but they actually do loads of different flavors as well. I had no idea. So let's have a quick look about what they say about it on their website, shall we? So they've not gone overboard here. They've just got a little bit about it. It just says Adnams Copperhouse Dry Gin is made using the London Dry Gin method, where the botanicals are added directly to the spirit in the copper pot still. Adnam's gin is made with juniper berries, orris root, coriander seed, cardamom pods, sweet orange peel, and hibiscus flower. Now, they all seem like traditional uh, uh, botanicals to me, apart from, of course, the hibiscus flower. I've never tried, I'll be absolutely honest, I've no idea what hibiscus tastes like. I've never munched on a hibiscus flower before, but I'm sure it's very nice. And who knows, maybe it could be the secret ingredient that uh, just uh, pushes this gin above the rest of them. Well, let's find out, shall we? Right then, get that off and the top, and doth my eyes deceive me, they doth not, it is a cork, so we know what that means, it's the cork test. So, first of all, we go for the squeak, does it have a squeak? Oh, a brilliant squeak, that's the best squeak we've had in months, hang on a minute. Oh my goodness, look at that, I've never, I thought that, I thought they'd stop making squeaky corks, that's excellent, so top works, top marks even on the uh, squeak test. Let's go for the full pull. Oh my goodness. God, an absolute mighty cork test. That is awesome. I'm very, very pleased with this. Adams people, if you're watching and think I've gone quite mad, don't worry. It's just something I do every week. But uh, do you know what? If we have a, uh, maybe I should do a scoreboard because that, my friends, will be top of the cork test. So top work, Adams, for the cork work. Right, so they smashed the cork test. Let's see if they smash the sniff test. Get a bit in there. It's a beautiful, clean pour. I like it. So let's get some up the old nostrils, shall we? So... Mmm, oh my god, that, oh, do you know when you get, sometimes you smell a gin and you just think, oh yes, here we go, there's nothing crazy in there, there's nothing sort of out there, but they know what they're doing, it's kind of, it's got this sort of, all the sort of the, the stuff you expect to be going on there, but there's certain sort of smoothness about it as well, and there's definitely a little sort of hint of floral sort of notes, but not overpowering, I don't think, what was that one? I think it was the Bloom Gin that was really overpowering with floral stuff. It was way too much, but that that smells pretty balanced to me. But as we know here on No Nonsense Gin Reviews, we don't stand around sniffing the gin. We want to drink it. So let's uh, marry it up to the tonic, shall we? And see what happens. Get in there. Beautiful. Okay, here we go. So Adnam's Copper House Gin. Cheers. Oh my, oh my God. Whoa, this is, I thought this was just gonna be just another gin gin, but it's, it's, it's so, oh, it's not, it, it, well it is, it is, but it's kind of multi-layered. Oh, I love tasting gin on this channel because you just never know what you're gonna get. This one, let me have another confirmation slurp. Hang on a second. Wow. It's one of those ones that tastes exactly like it smells. There's a certain, I don't know what it is, a very sort of smoothness about it, but you've got those gin flavors in abundance, but they're all kind of very sharp and defined. You can taste each one of them. And there is, they, they sort of, they're kind of there in like a sort of a spiky vase, all these sort of, uh, sort of very sort of dominant flavors. But then there's sort of a lovely sort of, floral sort of essence that kind of sort of washes around them all just sort of nonchalantly like this in sort of a, a rather more theatrical way than the stalwart sort of um sort of big gin flavors and it's it's beautiful it's really really nice and when i say there's a, a, a smoothness to it it's almost 
kind of a creaminess to it, which I suppose doesn't make sense, but it, it I think it kind of does. I think it will do if you try it. It's very, very, almost a kind of, some gins use a bit of a tiny, tiny bit of vanilla in there, and usually to great effect. Which ones do it like some of these fruity gins, like the uh, King of Soho Variorum and the uh, Sipsmith's, um, what was it called, the Lemon Drizzle. And it, as long as you don't do it in a, give it in abundance, that's actually really nice. Hang on. And you know what, too, that's actually quite a strong, and you know, people say I should drink it neat, they keep saying I should drink it neat, and I do do as well, but that, I like to pour that, uh, that's not very much tonic in there, that's a strong gin. And it's one of those gins that the flavours lend themselves, I think, to drinking it quite strong. So let's try it neat, and again, I've forgotten to pour another glass, so please forgive me, don't think I'm a heathen, I'm going to drink it straight out of the bottle, so here we go. Mm-hmm. Whoa! Whoa, oh yeah 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 okay they're literally washing over me like waves of flavors again there's a there's a definitely sort of a vanilla-y essence in there maybe it's because they're made by i think it's by the seaside where it comes from where is it from from Southwold. i think that's by the seaside so maybe they're taking sort of inspiration from the uh, people eating ice creams uh, uh, in the traditional british way by the seaside in the pouring rain but that my friends that it has lived up to the high standard. It literally, it's got full marks across the board. Excellent bottle, excellent squeak, excellent cork sound, excellent smell, and excellent taste to top it all off. So uh, has it got excellent ABV, 40%, nice. Not That's what I call the Goldilocks zone, not too high, not too low. Very, very good. Price-wise, excellent as well. But I got this one for £26, which is way below my top uh, £30 uh, bracket. £36, uh, sorry, £26, which is about $33 or uh, €30. Euros. So I am happy to pay that. In fact, it hasn't put a foot wrong. This gin, it's not very often we get a gin that just doesn't put a foot wrong, but this one has done it. I like this very, very much, especially the cork test. That was the best one I've had in ages. So um, my top tip today, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is get out there if you haven't already and try a bit of Copper House gin. And thank you very much to Craig Bestwick for recommending it. You clearly are a gin connoisseur, Craig, and I salute you. So guys, a fairly quick, succinct and to the point video today, but people have accused me of uh, jabbering on too long, so maybe it's probably for the best. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and press the little bell icon so you get notified when any of my videos come out. And I shall see you all next time on No Nonsense Gin Reviews, where I shall be Bobby Freeman. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.